in part 5 of the Vintage Motherboard Hall series, we have the Medion 9901 motherboard. Hello everyone and welcome to part 5 of the Vintage Motherboard Hall series. And of course we have the Medion 9901, which is the MSI 6190 VA, specifically built for OEMs like Medion, which is a German computer brand that uh, mostly sells computers in their Aldi uh, grocery stores. So yeah, again we have a micro ATX motherboard with a slot 1 uh, cartridge slot. We have two SD RAM uh, banks over here. We have a floppy channel, we have two IDE channels, we have the award BIOS chip located over here. We have two fan headers located in the vicinity of the CPU socket. We have the video controller for this motherboard under here. It is, it is a Riva TNT2 model 64 on board. The VIA chipset uh, is located elsewhere. Actually this is the TNT2 model 64. This is the VIA North Bridge. This is the VIA South Bridge. And here we have some VRAM. Uh, I think this one should have 32 megabytes of VRAM installed. We don't need quite as many chips as we did with the TNT1 that we saw in the previous video, but uh, it's still there. So uh, yeah, ISA slot has been deleted from this particular board. We only have three regular PCI slots. We also have a header over here, which I assume from the look of it is USB. Various connectors there for audio. And speaking of audio, this has a crystal chip, but it is branded as a sound blaster. It might even be an Ansonic again in the case of this board. Nope, we have in fact a creative chip, which we can see right there. The ES1373. So again, Ansonic technology in this board as well. Makes sense. So, yep. We got that. In terms of I.O., we have color-coded connectors on the back, PS2, USB, serial VGA parallel, game port, and the audio jacks. All nicely colored in, which is convenient. And yeah, that basically concludes the outside look uh, and tour of this board. I've replaced all of the coin cells in the boards with these Duracell ones. Uh, the Intel board does not seem to like them very much, so I might just flip in another battery or there's something wrong with it with that uh, particular uh, board guess we'll find out later front panel is located over here for your front panel headers and we have of course a PC speaker which was normal for the time a computer that doesn't beep and does not have a floppy controller does not really uh, deserve the name of being an actual computer right anyways let's get uh, various bits and bobs installed on the board See if it posts and go from there. And judging from how close the uh, capacitors are to the slot there, I think we can use our Pentium 2 finally. This board again does not officially support the Pentium 3 copper mine, it only supports up to Pentium 3 cat mine, of which we have one. It is currently uh, uncoolered, but this is a Pentium 3 cat mine 500 megahertz. So, yep, this is what one uh, looks like. We have the CPU die in the middle, and of course our guest chips on the side. Pentium 2 is much the same, you can probably see in there. You can see a cache chip over there. So yeah, this is Pentium 2 400 megahertz. Okay, let's get started with the install of our components. We'll install our Pentium 2 processor as such. The CPU fan is actually this one on this board, which is actually weird. The top one is power supply fan, as it is labeled. We're going to be bothering with that. We're going to be putting in a memory stick. Between the recording of the previous video on this one, I've been digging around in my SD RAM bin. I've decided to condemn that 128 module and just go with this 256. It will give us some more capacity if we want to test some heavier applications. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, and of course we're gonna need some uh, power as well. Which we will connect as such because the power connector is on the other side of the board. 
Okay. Want some audio. VGA keyboard and mouse. Alrighty. It's time to fire it up, so to speak. Alright, we're good to go. There we go. I have to find the pins to short for it to boot up. And again, at first we have a no post situation. I'm going to check if the CPU is seated correctly, which it is. It's good. Okay. In that case, back to the troubleshooting board. All right. Because it's always memory, and this will, won't be an exception, I'm going to assume. Again, assumptions are difficult and very dangerous. That's all I can say about it without uh, demonetizing my video. Um, Alright, so we need some other SD RAM. Of course, me and my infinite wisdom misplaced the 64 Mac stick that we used before. So I'll be back shortly. Got it. 64 megabytes. No, mini bytes, megabytes. All right. Doesn't power up straight away. Good. Let's try this. Two thousand years late. Nothing so far. Should have posted by now. Okay, so that is not the cause, which means we're going to go for the next best thing, which is removing the CMOS battery. The power supply is turned off. We're going to hold or short the pins that connect the power button to it. We'll hold it for 10 seconds. This should clear the CMOS. This motherboard probably has a clear CMOS header, but I haven't found it yet. That should do it. We can put the battery back in. Then we can turn the power back on and try again. Let's see what happens, if anything. Eternity later. As it currently stands, not a whole lot. No activity on the keyboard either. Okay, so we're gonna do what we did in the Chaintech video. Make absolutely sure that the CPU is seated properly. We can't wiggle it around. There we go. I believe these are locking tabs. Let's look at what the position is. Pull it up means it is locked. If you can't pull it up, that means the CPU is not locked on that side. could explain our problems. We can't get it in any tighter than that. So it'll have to do. And if that doesn't work, we'll have to consider a different CPU, but it works now. Yep, we have a Pentium 2 MMX at 400 megahertz. And we cleared CMOS, so default loaded is indeed correct. What we can see here is that we have a BIOS date from, it's actually obscured a little bit, 20th of October 1998. So that's definitely not the latest version for this port, but you know, it'll work. We'll go for setup here. Again, here we have our award BIOS. Typical for the time. Looks very similar to the uh, P2BF motherboard that I also have. Quick post, yep. 
also have an option to boot from LAN should we have a network card installed, which we do not at the moment. AC, SCSI, CA, SCSI, C, CD-ROM, A. Yeah, we'll leave it at that, so we can boot from a CD-ROM or a floppy drive. We'll turn that on for when we connect a floppy later, I guess. Eh, we'll leave it off. Okay. It suggested this value to be set to 2 in the post screen, which is actually quite useful. But we'll leave it at 3 just for stability's sake. I'd rather have it run a little bit slower than be unstable. Because we're just going through a test phase here. USB keyboard support. Yep, if I decide to get a different keyboard, that would be decent. Modem. I want to have the set to not available. Anything else we need to set here? I'm not sure. I don't think so. PMP and OS. Yep, I'm going to set that to enable. Integrated peripherals. Yep, we have onboard sound enabled. We're going to disable the serial because it will use up precious resources and we won't be using any serial devices. We won't be using parallel either. Power status LED, single, dual, blinking. Yeah, doesn't really matter. We don't have a LED connected. We have also an IDE hard drive auto detect feature, which is actually very useful because just a couple of years before this motherboard came out, you had to set your hard drive manually, which is annoying if your CMOS circuit is busted and you have to set that on every time you turn the computer off. And indeed, we have 32 megabytes in our Riva TNT2 Model 64 on board. All right, it's going to try to boot from something, which it will not be able to. Yep, system boot failure. All right, let's get an OS set up on this. And then we can start testing from there. All right, our operating system is done installing. So we can turn the system back on again. And it says all is well with our Pentium 2 MMX at 400 megahertz. It's detecting all the drives properly. And we do now in fact have 256 megabytes of RAM, which is working fine. So that memory stick was indeed good enough. And the sound card is working as well. It is labeled as the Sound Blaster P Audio PCI 128. In the previous video, we had the Sound Blaster Audio PCI 64V. They are closely related, but they don't use the same driver. So, yeah. But it's working, so that's what we were after. Alrighty. Let's take this CD out, which had the audio driver on it. CDRWs are a savior when you don't want to connect it to the network straight away. And because these old systems are starting to infect my file server, so I need to do some fixes for that. But that's outside of the scope of this video. Let's go and run our benchmarks and see how the Pentium 2 stacks up. This will of course be slower than a Pentium 3 750. I'm expecting roughly half the performance, so we'll see how that goes. We'll go and start with the 3D Bench 1.0C. I think in part 4 we had about 360. 302. That's not bad. We'll go for Chris's 3D Bench next. Hundred and six frames per second. Okay. PC player, six forty four eighty. This looks faster than it was on the on the Intel board with the P three seven fifty. But 
that's just my gut feeling. 45.6. No, I think that's actually quite a bit slower. I guess my gut isn't really that uh, reliable. Well, there's pills for that, I suppose. Uh, anyway, let's go into Doom. I'll definitely need to revisit this sometime with uh, the benchmarks copied to the hard drive. But this is real fast, though. Damn. Yeah, 744 real text. That's actually quite close to the Pentium 3, I think. I'll have to look up the results in the video and I'll pop it up on the screen for comparison. But, um, yeah. It looked uh, fine. Let's try Quake at 644A. This benchmark has been a problem. So we'll see if it runs now. Perhaps that was also because of the RAM limitation, but I don't suppose 64 megabytes or more was required to run Quake, but you never know. This runs fine though, it's 644A on a Pentium 2 400 megahertz. I'm not sure it's 30 FPS, but it's reasonably close. Yep, 33.5. Well, that's a good score actually. That would be perfectly acceptable. We'll run the time demo at 320-200 as well. Yeah, that's looking decent. That's over under FPS, I'm guessing. No, not quite. 86.1. All right. Good, 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 good. This is a beast for DOS gaming. So that's all looking very nice. Okay, so we'll try next again is to go into Duke Nukem and see if the if we can configure the onboard sound. Again, this will use different settings to the audio PCI 64V that we used before. I don't think this will run in soundscape mode. Nope. This is definitely a creative driver. So I'm going to assume we have to run uh, General MIDI for this one. Yep. Yep, that works fine. And our sound card will be a Sound Blaster emulation. At boot up I saw IRQ7, so we will set it to IRQ7. And then we'll test if that works. It is not, okay. I think we can set it in Windows, so we'll just have a look there in Device Manager. The Audio PCI Legacy device here. We have IRQ7, Address 220. Ah, here it is. This DMA setting is in conflict. It was set to 7. It does support AdLib emulation as well. No, I do not want to restart for that. That's absolutely dumb. So I guess it'll leave itself at 7 unless you reboot. I can't be bothered to reboot. We'll just set this to DMA7. Let's test it out. Yep, we have sound now. Good. Excellent. Sound effects volume can go a bit higher, I think, because that's very low. We'll go into this and set it to 640-480 and have a go at some Duke Nukeming at VGA resolution. 
Let's let's rock. Yep. Whoops. There's some input lag somewhere. It's my fingers. It's a little bit choppy, but not too bad. Nukem is working fine. It's a little bit choppy, it's like 40 for 80, but that's to be expected. It's quite a heavy game. Because it's all software rendering, there's no 3D acceleration whatsoever. This is way before that era. Speaking of 3D acceleration, let's go into our little tournament, Game of the Year Edition. Which does support 3D acceleration and heavily relies on it, in fact. Pentium 2 with a TNT 2 should have been a pretty classic combination for the budget-minded Unreal Tournament player at the time. I guess their choice would be a Celeron 466 or something like that, but or even a 300A with a heavy overclock. Loads a lot quicker with more RAM, so that was definitely our bottleneck in the previous part of this video series. Let's introduce a little bit, a couple more bots. Let's go with seven bots. Put some life in the map. Let's see what our frame milliseconds are going to do now. All right. Good to know, thank you very much. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. Too bad. This is noti noticeably worse, actually, than on the previous motherboard. It's quite stuttery. Again, I'm not entirely sure how the TNT and TNT2 model 64 compared to one another. I have not looked up any stats or anything. So that's definitely something we'll take a look at in a future video to test the TNT on board versus the TNT2 on board as well as the regular ATP version. As soon as we get the Chintech board to play ball and uh, perform properly, that's definitely something I'll have to test. Uh, because it's not really working as well as we thought it was. That's something that we saw in the previous part and is definitely prevalent here because even this P2 400 is performing quite a lot better overall in the DOS managed markings. So, anyway, this was the Median 9901, otherwise known as the MSI 6190VA. And, uh, yep, this board is once again uh, fully working. This one does not have any uh, issues that I've noticed so far in my brief testing period. Uh, yeah, the Intel board in our previous part uh, has some issues with its uh, CMOS uh, charge circuit, so there's something wrong there, but nothing too major. But this board appears fully functional, uh, so that's nice. And the onboard sound is functioning quite well, so I don't really need uh, that ISA slot anyway. So that concludes part 5 in the Vintage Motherboard Hall series. Hope you enjoyed this part as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.